Christmas University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. One Oxford College plays another Oxford College tonight in the second semi-final of this year's Christmas special series for graduates. Tonight's alumni teams not only won their first round matches, they achieved some of the highest scores of the heats, in both cases against tough opposition. Whoever wins tonight will join Edinburgh in the series final. The Hartford team are here having beaten a very able team from the LSE, thanks to an impressive knowledge of Welsh geography, the Harlem Renaissance and ballets by Matthew Bourne. Returning to play on behalf of an institution dating back to the 13th century are a jazz saxophonist and composer, a historian of the Tudor period, a political correspondent and a former cricketer turned sports writer and commentator. Let's meet the Hartford team again. My name's Soweto Kinch. I studied history at Hartford College, Oxford between 1996 and 99, and I am a jazz saxophonist, MC, and composer. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Norton, and I studied um, for a master's in European archeology span at Hartford between 2003 and 2004. I'm a historian, and my most recent book is The Lives of Tudor Women. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm Adam Fleming. I studied geography and graduated in 2001. I'm now the BBC's chief political correspondent and present the Newscast podcast. Hi, I'm Isabel Westbury. I studied physiology and I graduated in 2013. I'm now a sports journalist and financial crime lawyer. Now, the team from St Anne's saw off stiff competition from Corpus Christi College, Cambridge, in the closest of the first round matches. They answered well on topics ranging from vegetables of the Parsley family to Blackadder's Christmas Carol. And hoping to repeat that performance tonight are a historian and biographer, a structural engineer and author of two recent books on notable buildings, a comedian and broadcaster, and a political journalist. Let's meet the St Anne's team. Hello. I'm Sarah Gristwood. I graduated in English in the 80s. I now write about women and history and my latest book is The Tudors in Love. Hi, I'm Roma Agrawal. I'm a structural engineer. I graduated with physics in 2004, and I've written two books called Built and How Was That Built? And this is their captain. Hi, I'm John Robbins, and after an unsuccessful application to Hartford College, Oxford, I was accepted into St Anne's, where I flourished and studied English, and I'm now a comedian and broadcaster. Hello, I'm Adam Parsons. I graduated from St Anne's in 1991 with a degree in modern history, and I'm now the Europe correspondent of Sky News. Well, you must all have some idea of the rules to have got this far, but in case you need a reminder, starter questions are solo efforts to be answered on the buzzer. A correct starter wins your team a set of bonuses where you can confer before giving your answer. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. Used for the melody of the former South Korean national anthem, graduations in the Philippines, funerals in Taiwan, and ushering out customers at closing time in Japanese shops. What song about old friends and recording past adventures was compiled by Robert Burns from Old Resources? Hartford Fleming. For Old Lang Syne? Old Lang Syne is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on new sports at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. In each case, name the sport from the description. A single word answer is sufficient. Firstly, a sport regulated by the IFSC, with disciplines including lead and speed. Gold medalists in the men's and women's combined events came from Spain and Slovenia. Surfing? No, it's not skateboarding. It's not windsurfing. When did BMX start? BMX? No, that, that was a... No. That was before, champion. wasn't it? Yeah. Just go for windsurfing. Windsurfing? Yeah. Wind no, it was sport climbing. Events in this sport took place at a location on the Boso Peninsula, southeast of Tokyo. Competitors used a piece of equipment about 1.8 metres in length. So windsurfing. Master windsurfing. Course. No, it's surfing. A martial art whose disciplines include oh, right. kata or form and oh, yes. kumite or sparring. Karate. The name of this sport Karate. means empty hand. Karate. Karate is correct, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this starting question. What two letters begin words with the following meanings? An Italian dessert that resembles trifle, 
a brand of vodka flavoured with bison grass, and a North American word for a courgette. So Dan Zulka a while. Z-U? Z-U is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on novels published in the early noughties. In each case, identify the work from its characters. Firstly, Calliope Stephanides, Chapter 11, and Somalina Lina Zismo. No. I don't know. I don't have no idea. Any guesses? No, nothing, I'm afraid. It's Geoffrey Eugenides, Middlesex. Susan Trinder, Maud Lilly, Richard Gentleman Rivers, and Mrs. Suxby. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Zilch, I'm afraid, here, Jeremy. It's Fingersmith. Finally, Piscine, Molitor, Patel, Orange Juice, and Richard Parker. God, Don't know, I'm afraid. It's the life of Pi. Ten points for this. In the United States, the third Monday in January is a public holiday commemorating the birth in 1929 of which political figure? Hartford Norton. Martin Luther King. Correct. <laughs> you get three bonuses on events that took place on January the 1st. January the 1st, 1959. Saw President Batista flee which country following a decisive victory for Cuba. rebel forces at the Battle of Santa Clara? Cuba. Cuba. Cuba is correct. Lachlan Macquarie became governor of which British colony on January the 1st, 1810, holding office until 1821? He gives his name to a university in Sydney. Tasmania? Or Australia. Is it just Australia? New South Wales? I don't know if that was a colony. Oh. It has been the whole country. Australia. It's been yeah, a colony, so just go... I think it's Australia. Yeah, go for Australia. 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 No, it's New South Wales. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Having been a British protectorate since 1888, which Islamic sultanate on the north coast of Borneo became independent on New Year's Day 1984? Indonesia. Sarawak, Java. Java. Brunei. Brunei. Burma. Brunei. Burma. Brunei. 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 Brunei is correct. <laughs> We're going to take a picture round. For your picture starter, you'll see a map showing the movements of invading forces in a military conflict. For ten points, give the name by which this conflict is most commonly known. St. Anne's Ukrawal. The Crimean War? No. Hartford Fleming. The Second World War? No, it's the Winter <laughs> War. So we're going to take the picture bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points at stake for this starter question. To blow hot and cold, cry wolf and sour grapes are among idioms derived from the supposed writings of which legendary Greek fabulist? St. Anne's Robbins. Aesop. Aesop is correct. Well done. <laughs> Now, uh, you saw a picture of the troop movements in the Winter War, the first soviet finnish war, fought between November 1939 and March 1940. Your picture bonuses are three more military campaigns fought through snowy weather. Five points for each you can name. First, the battle fought where these two armies meet. This is in Scandinavia somewhere. Northern Russia going into Denmark and the Germans. Yeah. Uh, Hundred Years' War. No, it's Battle on the Ice in 1242. Secondly, this late 19th century conflict... Can we tell where we are? Yeah, exactly. I didn't even... Are there any country is names already? Is that a Peloponnese? Is it... I have no is idea where that is. Is it Crimea? Go for it. it yeah, go for it. Is that, the, is that the Crimean War? No, it's not. It's the First Sino-Japanese War. <laughs> and finally, give the year in which this military campaign took place. The invading forces are in blue, the defending forces are in white. We're heading towards That's, um, Moscow. I mean, that could be Napoleonic, couldn't yeah. it? Or it could be Crimea. I would have thought Should we go Crimea again? I would have thought it's Napoleon's advance on Moscow. Let's, yeah, let's try Napoleon. Is it Napoleon's advance on Moscow? Now, I have to take the first answer you give, and you didn't give the year, which included the military campaign. So it's 1812. Right, ten points for this. Mount Vernon, the home of George Washington, lies on the banks of which river that rises in the Appalachian Mountains and flows into Chesapeake Bay via the District of Columbia. Hartford Fleming. The Potomac. Potomac is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on biological terms that end with the same four letters. Identify each term from the description. Firstly, the most common metabolic bone disease characterised by the thinning of the bones. It thus increases the tendency to sustain fractures from minor stresses. Osteoporosis. Correct. 
Any association between members of two different species that live together, even if those species benefit, harm or have no effect on each other? Symbiosis. Symbiosis. Correct. The cause of death of the authors Catherine Mansfield, Anton Chekhov and Franz Kafka? Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is correct. Ten points for this. Published in 1994, Santaland Diaries is the account of which... Hartford Fleming. David Sedaris. David Sedaris is correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on early 20th century spy fiction. Give the single word that completes the title of a 1903 work by Erskine Childers, often described as the first spy novel. The riddle of the what? Isn't it Sandal Sphinx? I think it's the oh, Sphinx. Sphinx. I thought it was Sphinx, but it might be Sands. Go with Sands, I don't know. Sands? Sands is correct. Who is the protagonist of John Buchan's novels? Green Mantle, Mr Stanfast and The Island of Sheep. I need only the surname. Oh, is it the same as The 39 Stairs? Possibly. What's his name? What's his name? I don't know. Ah, sorry. It's Richard Hanney. Based on his experiences with British intelligence in World War I, which literary figure wrote short stories featuring the spy Ashenden? Green. His other works include Of Human Bondage. I was thinking Graham Green, but it's not him. It's not it's John Le Carre. Mm -hmm. John Le Carre. John Le Carre. Yeah. John Le Carre. No, it was Somerset Maugham. Ten points for this. What activity is described on the website of its world association, wrpsa.com? as a zero-sum game that is usually played by two people using their hands and no tools. St Anne's Hook for a while. Um, Thumb Wars? No. Anyone want to buzz from Hartford? I'll tell you, it's... Hartford Westbury? Warhammer? No, it's uh, rock, paper, scissors, Rochambo. <laughs> Ten points for this. Believed to have been first used by Hipparchus in the 2nd century BC as a form of measurement and derived from the Greek for alterations, what name is given in astronomy to the difference in direction of an object when viewed from two differing positions? St Anne's Parsons. Diffraction. No, anyone want to buzz from Hartford? It's parallax. Ten points for this starter question. Panettone, the cylindrical sweet bread traditionally associated with the festive season, originated in which Italian city? Half a kinch. Perugia? Bombina. No. Bombina. Anyone want to bust some St. Anne's? Uh, One of you may St. Anne's Robins. Naples. No, it's Milan. Ten points for this. What area of the London Borough of Tower Hamlets gives its name to the Declaration of 1981 that launched the Social Democratic Party? Arthur Fleming. Limehouse. Limehouse is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on people born in Croydon. Name each person from the description. Firstly, a singer and songwriter who died in 2000. Her hits include A New England and There's a Guy Works Down the Chip Shop Swears He's Elvis. I have no idea. Kirsty McCall. Kirsty McCall. Correct. Secondly, the artists whose works include Everyone I Have Ever Slept With, 1963 to 1995. Tracy Emin. Correct. And finally, a popular music performer born in 1993. His albums include Heavy Is The Head. Oh, Stormzy. Stormzy. Stormzy is correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. What name applied to a light toboggan has come to describe the sport in which one is used by competitors sliding feet first? Sir Dan's Parsons. Skeleton. No. You lose five points. Hartford Kinch. Luge. Correct. Well done. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on shorter words that can be made using any of the ten letters of the word chillblains. In each case, give the word from the definition. The common name for Syringa vulgaris, the widely cultivated shrub mentioned in the opening lines of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. Oh, I'm thinking April is the coolest month or something. Oh, yeah. yeah um... I don't know. <laughs> I studied at school. But it's in the word chill blains. Like, yeah, and um, the plant. There. Um, <laughs> um, don't I don't mean. know, sorry. sorry. It's lilac or lilacs. Oh. And secondly, a Latin word meaning elsewhere, often used in criminal investigations. Alibi. Alibi. Oh, yeah. yeah, alibi. Correct. And finally, a Russian pancake often served as a canopy with toppings such as cream cheese, caviar or smoked salmon. A blini. 
Correct. <laughs> right, time for a music round. For your music starter, you'll hear an aria from an opera. Ten points if you can name its composer. Hartford Westbury. Puccini. It is. <laughs> from La Boheme, your tiny hand is frozen, so... That's sung by Rodolfo to Mimi on Christmas Eve. Your bonuses are three more seasonal operatic excerpts. In each case, name the composer of the opera in which they appear. First, the French composer of this opera based on a German novel. French composer, German novel. <laughs> <laughs> the French composer's name. Oh, Debussy, they're uh, opera, opera composer. Mm. French composer. You're an opera. Debussy? Okay, no. should we say that? I mean, yeah. Debussy? No, it's not Debussy, it's Massigny from Werther. And secondly, this American composer. Say Sondheim because he's just right. right. Yeah, he's not quite, I don't think it's him. It's quite contemporary. It's not Schoenberg, but it might as well. Very Schoenberg. Hmm? Schoenberg. I think it's right. Arnold Schoenberg. Schoenberg. No, it's wrong. Yeah. As you knew, it's Samuel Barber. That's Vanessa. And finally, this Russian composer. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. Did we both say that? Tchaikovsky. No, that's Rimsky Korsakov. Right. right, ten points for this. By mass, what is the most abundant element of Earth's lithosphere and also Earth's hydrosphere, making up about 86% of the latter? Hartford Kinch. Nitrogen. No, you lose five points. Sedanzo uh, Grewal. Water. No, it's oxygen. Ten points for this. Meanings of what word include lineage or ancestry? In a military context, removal of individuals from hostile territory... And in industry, the process of separating metals from metal So Dan's metal Robbins. Extraction. Extraction is correct. <laughs> Three questions on forms of a word for your bonuses. Thomas Hardy turned away from the writing of fiction after which novel of 1895 met with severe disfavour? Its characters include Arabella Don and Sue Brighthead. I think Jude the Obscure. Yeah. Jude the Obscure. It is Jude the Obscure, of course. The Daily Obscura and Weekly Chloroform are publications owned by the characters Grinder and Sweater in which novel of 1914 by Robert Tressel? No, no idea, I'm afraid. That's the Ragged Trousers Philanthropist. Mm -hmm. My English is chaste and all licentious passages are left in the obscurity of a learned language. These are the words of which historian, born 1737? 1737. Mm, no, Macaulay's later, isn't he? Um, Vestas? Um, Macaulay. Macaulay? No, it's Gibbon. Oh. Ten points for this. Which of the Romantic poets wrote the lines, Hail to thee, blithe spirit, bird thou never wert? The lines appear in his 18th... Hartford Norton. John Keats. No, you lose five points. Bird thou never wert. The lines appear in his 1820 poem to a skylark. St. Anne's Griswold. Wordsworth. No, it's Shelley. Ten points for this. The work known as La Brabanson, composed by Francois von Kampenhout in 1830, is the national anthem of which European country? St. Anne's Parsons. Sounds like the Netherlands. No? Anyone want to buy some Hartford? Hartford Kinch. Luxembourg. No, it's Belgium. Ten points for this. In December 1913, what specific object was discovered in the hotel room in Florence of Vincenzo Perugia, a former employee of a French art gallery? St. Anne's Robbins. The Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses on fruit. Used in Japanese cuisine, the yuzu, sudachi and mikan are among fruits of what genus? Is citrus a genus or am I being thick? Citrus is a it genus. Sounds like I'd give it a go. Uh, citrus. Citrus is correct. Taking the second part of its binomial from its Japanese name, diospyros kaki, 
bears orange fruit resembling large tomatoes. What is its common name? Is that a kumquat? It could be. I mm. think kumquat. a kumquat is... They're quite small. Yeah. What are the bigger kumquats? What is that, that yellow thing, almost the size of an apple? Is there Dorian? Dorian's on no. orange? No. I think we're talking no, ourselves out of kumquat. Yeah. Kumquat. No, it's not. It's a persimmon or Sharon fruit. Often known by the Japanese name Nashi, Pyrus pyrifolia bears a crisp textured apple shaped fruit with what generic name? Yeah, pear. Pear. Pear is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. What class of the phylum Chordata links the names of the American football teams representing Baltimore, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Arizona, and Seattle? St. Anne's Parsons. Birds. Birds is correct, yes. <laughs> These questions are on states of India. A little larger than Cornwall, what state became part of India in 1962, having been the capital of the Portuguese Asian Empire? Pondicherry. No, yeah. that's French. It's um, the one with, Goa. Goa, with Goa. Goa in it. Or is Goa? Yeah. I think Goa. Goa. Goa is correct. Known as the Pink City after its distinctive buildings, what city is the capital of the state of Rajasthan? Jaipur. 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 Jaipur is correct. I need a two-word term here. Kolkata is the capital of which state that's bordered by Bhutan and Nepal to the north and northwest? West Bengal. West Bengal. West Bengal is correct. <laughs> Your picture starting now. We're going to see a painting. For ten points, name the artist. Hartford Kinch. Gustav Munch. OK, I'll accept that. His first name was, in fact, Edvard rather than Gustav. Munch is correct. So we follow on from that painting of A Walk Through the Snow with your picture bonuses, three more paintings of winter walks. Again, name the artist in each case. Firstly... Oh, that's... I don't recognise it. I don't know. Um, it looks really like the Lady of... Shall... No, what's that one? Oh. A romantic one? Yeah, I don't know. Millais? No, I've got no idea. Millais? I don't think it's... No, I don't know. Millais? No, it's Friedrich, Caspar David Friedrich. Secondly... Ooh, this looks like Klimt. Klimt. Could be Klimt, I don't know. Yeah. Do you love Klimt? Um, Klimt? No, it's Kirchner. And finally... <laughs> ah, it's Van, Van Gogh. Gogh. Yeah, Van Gogh. It is Vincent Van Gogh. Right, ten points for this. The cities of Cody and Laramie and the greater part of the Yellowstone National Park are all located in which US state, nicknamed the Equality State? St. Dan's Parsons. California. Anyone want to buzz from Hartford? Arthur Kinch. Colorado. No, it's Wyoming, so ten points at stake for this starter question. Which former US Army chief, while Secretary of State in the Truman administration, Proposed the European Recovery Programme that bears his name. Hartford Fleming. Marshall. Marshall is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the Beatles' Abbey Road album, which topped the charts in 1969. In each case, name the album track from the clues to the words in its title. First, a Scottish physicist who formulated electromagnetic theory, a metallic element once used to make shillings and half-crowns, and an implement that appeared on the flag of the USSR. When taken together, Silver they suggest which sickle. track? Maxwell Silverhammer. Pardon? Ma Maxwell, Maxwell Silverhammer. Silver Correct. The large mollusk depicted in cocoa-sized print, the dream of the fisherman's wife, and an attraction at National Trust properties such as Bodnant. So, mollusk, um, mussel. Oh, what was that? The, what's what's the garden? The old octopus's oh, garden. Yeah, in octopus's is it, garden. Is it called Octopus's, octopus's garden? garden I think. Octopus's garden? Correct. Finally, the conjunction that corresponds to the German weil, the Latin quad, and the Spanish porque. Why? Yeah. Why? Is it just why? 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 Oh. Why? No, it's because. Oh. <laughs> Ten points for this. What novel of 1906 did Jack London describe as the Uncle Tom's Cabin of Wage Slavery? Set in the meatpacking district of Chicago, its title implies a place of ruthless struggle or exploitation. It's Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. Right, ten points for this. Symbolising the victory of good over evil, the Hindu festival of Dushara marks the victory of Ram, an avatar of Vishnu over which ten-headed ah, demon so king? So that's Ograwal. 
Ravana. Ravana is correct. <laughs> you get these bonuses on Scottish council areas. The name of what historic Scottish county appears in the names of three present-day council areas? Two of these have their administrative headquarters at Irvine and Kilmarnock. The Scottish geography. No. I'm going to say Renfrewshire for every single one of these questions. <laughs> Go for it. I'm going to say Renfrewshire. Well, you'd be wrong. It's Ayrshire. <laughs> Two Scottish council areas border England and one is Scottish borders. What's the other? I need a three-word name. Is it Low Lowlands? Um... <laughs> That's one word to guess. Uh, Try the two that you know. Lowlands and borders. Uh, lowlands and borders. No, it's Dumfries and Galloway. Which Scottish council area shares borders with Moray, Aberdeenshire, Perth and Kinross and Argyll and Butte? Yeah, I've got to chuck Renfrewshire okay. in. <laughs> Can I say Renfrewshire? Well, you could, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> it's Highland. Ten points for this. The Philippine yam... Dioscoria alata, known locally as ube, is used to make food of what colour? Sedanzo uh, Grewa. Purple. Purple is correct. You get the set of bonuses on historians. Which British historian, who died in 2015, is noted for a large body of work on the history and politics of the Soviet Union, including the books The Great Terror and Stalin and the Kirov Murder? You'll be right. <laughs> It's never, it's never a historian's period. <laughs> um, I'm afraid we don't know. It's Robert Conquest. Which historian has, since 2000, produced major biographies of Lenin, Stalin and Trotsky? He shares his name with a poet known as the Canadian Kipling. Was that Canadian? It's not Anthony, it's not Anthony Beaver, is it? No, I don't think it no, is. No, Beaver's written about war, isn't it? Yeah. Anthony Beaver. No, he's English. It's Robert Service. And finally, Young Stalin and Stalin, Court of the Red Tsar are among the most recent non-fiction works of which historian and novelist? Simon Seabag Montefiore. Is it? Is it Seabag Montefiore? Don't Can I know. nominate Sarah to answer this? <laughs> yes, you'd be right, Sir Dan, but never mind. You go out on 95 in the semi-final, which is a perfectly respectable position to withdraw from the competition. Harford College, 155 is a great score. We should look forward to seeing you in the final. I hope you can join us next time for the series final. But until then, it's goodbye from St Anne's College, Oxford. Bye -bye. Goodbye. It's goodbye from Hartford College, Oxford. Bye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>